Well, thanks for joining us as we watch your ag commodity trade here on a Thursday. No export sales numbers today because of the holiday on Monday. They will come out tomorrow. Joining us right now, we have Brian Hoops on the line. He's with Midwest Market Solutions out of Springfield, Missouri. And Brian, looking at our ag trade today on the grain markets, a little firmer tone in the corn, but a lot of weakness in the soybean market here today. What is behind all that? Well, there was a report that came out this morning um, that Brazil's soybean crop is expected to increase. That'll be reflected in the USDA numbers next week. But this private analyst looking at Brazil's soybean crop at about 121 million tons, that's going to be up 5.5% from last year. Um, last year, they produced about 115 million tons, and that is expected to cut into U.S. exports. In fact, Brazil could outpace the U.S. as far as production this year for the first time in history. And uh, that's really pushed the soybean market lower here. We, we had a couple-day rally um, based on some better export news, and then this news hit this morning. So really starting to pressure the soybean market uh, today. Corn, of course, is finding a little bit of spillover strength from the wheat market, which is trending higher. And we just have not seen a lot of the fun selling that has driven corn to contract lows over the last couple of days. That's not shown up today. Kind of odd to consider corn as a follower here uh, lately. Uh, let's take a look at the market prices right now, we, starting with that corn market that you just talked about. We are a penny higher with December now at 359 and a half. So we're about a penny and a quarter from our low of the day, but it's been a narrow range, only about three cents wide anyway. Uh, March now up three quarters of 372 and a half. The soybean market that uh, Brian was just alluding to here shows losses of a dime on the first three months now. We currently have November soybeans down 10 and a half cents. We're now quoted at 8.65 per bushel, and that is almost 14 cents off our overnight high. What a drop we've seen here. Now in the wheat trade in Chicago today, we uh, currently have that December contract now six higher at 4.66 and three quarters. Interesting to see it leading the corn for a change. And in the uh, Kansas City wheat market today, right now you have your December up eight at 392 and a half and uh, Minneapolis December is up seven and a half at 501 and a half. We'll come back in a moment and talk more with Brian Hoops about our livestock trade when we come back. We're talking with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He is in Missouri, in Springfield, Missouri. And we're gonna take a look at our livestock trade right now. And as we dive into the futures, I was just checking to see if we had any cash cattle trade today. I don't see anything posted yet. On the futures, we have the live cattle market on October, now 58 lower at 98.45, December down 60 at 102.97, so kind of holding where they have been most of the morning. Meanwhile, on the feeder cattle trade, which was very strong yesterday, today it's about that much weaker. We have September feeders down a dollar, and October down 113 now at 132.30. The deferred's not quite as weak. If you look at the lean hog market, we had big gains today, and they have trimmed those now. December lean hogs up $1.18 at 66.40. Earlier, they were $2 higher. February now up 122. So, Brian, uh, what's at work here in the livestock trade? It seems like more weakness starting to creep back in here. Yeah, we've seen a lot of fun selling in the cattle market. Uh, and they continue to be sellers of that. Even though prices are already discount to the cash markets, you mentioned October below the $100 mark. There was a little bit of trade on the uh, auction yesterday at 103, some trade in the north at 165 to 167 dress. So we're looking at three to five dollars lower compared to the uh, prices last week, and that's uh, reason enough to continue to think we're going to remain under some pressure in here, especially if we cannot get boxes to rally again. That's when we saw the higher cash trade just a couple weeks ago when we had a surge in that box beef, and uh, now that we're past the Labor Day holiday. Demand usually starts to slow a little bit as, as a lot of people put their grills away for the fall and winter months. You know, speaking of that box beef trade, we got an afternoon update yesterday from USDA. And uh, I was surprised to see how much they dropped on the select cuts yesterday. So let's take a look. Uh, the choice values on the beef cutouts yesterday were down a penny and uh, they had a price of 230.65 per hundredweight. Meanwhile, the select cuts yesterday were down $2.67 at 208.95. That was a big time drop there. The spread is still $21.70. Now, if you look at the wholesale pork side, we had some big drops there yesterday. Take a look at the carcass values yesterday, dropping $1.74, priced at 72.86. The loin market was down by $2.69 yesterday. They were quoted at 70.23 per hundredweight. 
the ham market down 201 and we had the belly market losing four dollars in value just yesterday afternoon and they were priced at 108.78 brian from what i understand the cash hog trade has been getting weaker out there in the country as well yeah you watch the uh, lean hog index that's a pretty good indication of of how the uh, cash markets are going it's been uh, softening last uh, several days down s several dollars as that cash market weakens Seeing quite a bit of intermarket spreading in the futures today with some of those deferreds, December, February, April, seeing triple digit gains, but October is trading lower. And we're kind of running out of time for that October contract to make much of a, an advance, especially when the cash markets are trading lower and uh, tomorrow's export sales really will be watched closely by the trade to see if China shows up as shipping any pork to them from the United States. So it looks like uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I was just checking, and we are up 429 points right now. So a big surge in the equity markets again this morning. It sounds like optimism uh, of China trade talks that will resume maybe in October on face-to-face -face negotiations. But that old axiom that uh, what was good for the equity markets is not necessarily um, conducive to uh, a positive move here in the livestock trade. That's not working out today, is it? Uh, they're not trading in tandem here at all. Yeah, they're, they're really not. You know, I think this is the 13th uh, round of meetings that the U.S. and China has had. And so the trade may be kind of worn out from uh, hoping and anticipating we're going to get something done. Obviously, the stock market is, is rallying in, in hopes of it. But uh, you know, as far as grain trade and, and livestock trade goes, I, you know, the markets are, are taking more of a wait and see approach. So what are you telling producers that have hogs and, and uh, cattle out there in the country and they're needing to maybe lock in some feed needs as we get uh, closer toward the end of the year there? What's your recommendation to these guys? Do they jump right now and lock something in or are you willing to be a little more patient right now? Well, you know, there's going to be pockets this winter where yields are down significantly and basis levels are really going to improve in some of those areas. So you've got to watch your area and your basis level as far as locking in feed costs. But as we go into the harvest time frame, the, late, the early planted corn is going to be harvested first. Stuff that was planted in April and early May is probably going to have some phenomenal yields, and that could pressure prices. But as we get into more of the middle of harvest and later stages of harvest, some of that later planted crops will be harvested. And by that time, prices could see some sort of a post-harvest rebound depending upon those yields, how good or bad they are. So certainly uh, by the early stages of harvest, use weakness to get some hedge producers locked in as far as buying feed costs, soybean meal, and corn. Well, good advice. Thanks for, uh, for talking with us, Brian. I appreciate that very much. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He's located in Springfield, Missouri. I'm going to kick it over to Christina with a very special guest.